Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java and Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. Today I'm going to show you how to, to uh, basically uh, create, compile, execute our first uh, program, just a simple hello Pi to the console there. I'm going to pull up my, my website, uh, pyjava.com, and select Pi Programming here, and I'm going to select the hello Pi. <clears throat> now this tutorial will demonstrate how to create, compile, and run a program especially written for Java ME. Now it's noteworthy to mention that if you're accustomed to creating and running programs for Java SE, well, Java ME is somewhat different. You will need a basic understanding of Java programming in order to follow along with my Raspberry Pi tutorials, and if you are new to programming, then you are in luck. I've created an extensive Java programming series on my website at javacjava.com or pyjava.com. They both point to the same page. Um, even with a good amount of Java programming under your belt, you may find parts of this tutorial confusing, but I promise that if you stick with it, you will understand everything cl crystal clear with time. Uh, and we'll explain key concepts in detail in future tutorials. Um, Java SE Standard Edition. In Java SE, program execution begins with our special declaration of the main method. Furthermore, we do not need to declare any import statements because the Java Lang package is imported implicitly. Now we compile our Java source code into a class, into a dot class bytecode file using Java C. Finally, we can execute our bytecode by passing the class name as an argument to the JVM by running the Java command. Now our Java SE program ends when all the statements have been executed. So here's a typical class, hello world, right? Here's our main method entry point and we're just printing this to the console. Now let's talk about this, essentially this doing the same thing in Java ME micro edition. So let me just preface this next paragraph by saying that you should not be concerned if any of the following sentences make zero sense. After all, the purpose of my tutorials is to teach you something that you do not already know. Now in Java ME, program execution begins with the start app method as opposed to the main method in Java SE. Now at the bare minimum, we need to import the Java X micro edition midlet, midlet package from the Java ME class's zip file located in the lib folder of our ME installation. Don't worry about that. Once again, if it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Now, however, we need to, we still need Java SE standard edition to compile our ME programs. That's right. We are going to use my favorite compiler, Java C, to compile our Java, Java ME compilation units, aka source code files. Now there's a whole bunch more we need to do in order to execute our first program in Java ME. Now more than I care to explain in this paragraph anyway. What you really need to understand is that Java ME programs are meant to run on IoT, Internet of Things, devices. These devices are things like IP cameras, thermostats, garage door openers, smart light bulbs, etc. These devices do not have screens, keyboards, mice, and full-blown operating systems like laptops or desktops. They are designed to perform a specific function and perform it over and over and over and never stop. So how do we write programs for devices like these using Java ME? Well, I'm about to show you. The Raspberry Pi is somewhat unique because it's essentially a full-blown computer and yet it has the ability to mimic the functionality of an IoT device at the same time. It's all thanks to the GPIO functionality, little ports there. So here's the, essentially the same program in Java ME. We have to import the Java X micro edition midlet, and I'll show you how to do that package there and um, class hello pi we have to extend the midlet um, uh, class there okay and here is our public void start app and you'll notice it doesn't take any parameters so and we just print to the console hello pi now one of the things we don't have in FE is we don't have a destroy app function there and um, even it takes a parameter which is interesting so um, when the application is destroyed, it will print this to the console goodbye pi. Okay, so let's just jump right into it and play around with some source code examples. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my browser off here and I am going to remote desktop into my Raspberry Pi. Okay, and of course if you're working directly from the Raspberry Pi, that'll work too as well there. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and open up uh, a browser here and go to pyjava.com. 
and uh, what we can do from there is to go ahead and cut and paste a lot of this stuff into uh, leaf pad when we run it there. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is open up our console. And maybe I can kind of get this going and uh, just kind of right underneath there, okay. And um, of course we're logged in as Pi and uh, on the Raspberry Pi machine and we're on the default Pi folder there. So I'm gonna do a make dir java uh, mk dir java, right? And then I'm gonna change directories to the java folder. I'm gonna make another directory here called hello pi and change directories to the hello pi folder. And when I hit like H like that, I'm hitting the tab key on the keyboard and it auto fills a lot of stuff in. You'll, when you ever see that auto fill, try to the tab if you're not familiar with that. Okay, so um, we're going to type in leafpad hello pi dot java. Okay? And, um, and we'll come over here and we are just going to copy and paste the following code, which is the same thing that you saw up top there. Control C, copy, Control V, paste, um, Control C, uh, also performs another function later on, as you'll see. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and save this file right here. Now, one of the things that I've talked about before, previous tutorials here, is that basically the leaf pad just sits there and blocks. It doesn't return back to the, to the command line there until we actually close out of it, which is fine. We'll go ahead and just close out of that. All right, so the, um, if I do an ls, which is basically gives us a directory, I could also do a dir there too. Um, we just got this one simple file there. All right, let's uh, bring back up the browser window. I thought I minimized that. Oh, I did minimize that. There it is. Now I have a bunch of minimized up there. Um, now, in order to compile this here, we have to, uh, let's just say for example, if, if I did java c uh, hello pi dot java, right? We're gonna come up with an error because that class, um, the midlet class here, is, uh, is not in the java se, uh, in the java, java se path, okay? One of the things, I'll just open up File Explorer here, make this a little bit more simple there. We created the Java ME folder in the last uh, tutorial here. And inside of the, um, the uh, let's go back here. Inside of this Java ME folder, we have this live folder here. And this is the classes.zip. And if you're interested, you can go ahead and open that up or browse it or take a look or whatever on that thing, right? But the, uh, the Java X, Java X micro edition midlet package exists in there. So um, so we have to basically use what's called the, the class path um, parameter here for Java C. So Java C minus class path, okay? And we're gonna do a dot colon home and forward slash pi. If you're not familiar with, with how this works here, let's go back here to the uh, directory tree here. We've got the pi right here, the pi folder, which is our her, where we're currently logged in. But down here, if you go to the, the root of the thing there, you'll have this home. And then here is where pi actually exists. So pi actually exists underneath this, this home folder here, okay? Um, and then forward slash java me forward slash live forward slash now if I hit C and tab classes zip will fill in that's how you know you're in the right folder too as well and you didn't type anything wrong in there okay so now we've uh, oh well you know what it would sure help so I'm gonna hit the up arrow to bring all that up and then of course the file that we want to compile which is hello pi Java okay all right now we should get right back to the to the prompt there and let's go ahead and do an LS right now we got two files Hello pi.java, original source code compilation file, and we've got our bytecode.class file there, right? DIR also works here too. Um, all right, so now the next thing that we want to do is just come down here. I'll give you a little bit, a uh, little bit of, a little bit more information. So Java runs things called Imlet suites. Now don't worry about the terminology or what they are at this point in time. I will go over what they are in detail in future tutorials. 
One piece of an Imlet suite is a manifest file. A manifest file contains information about our Imlet suite and will be compiled into a jar, a Java archive, right? So type the following into terminal, okay? We're in the Java Hello Pi folder there. So we're gonna type in uh, leafpad manifest.mf, okay? And you always wanna probably name it that. There's no other reason not to. It's kind of a convention as far as that goes. Okay, so now we've got our leaf pad up here, right? And we're just gonna come down here. Um, I'm gonna talk just a little bit more about this super important thing here. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna copy, control C and paste, okay? Now, copy and paste or type the following code in leaf pad, sure to save the file when you're done. Now, what is super important, be sure to put an extra line break at the end of the file. I can't emphasize this enough. This is required for the jar to, to run properly. You will get an error if you forget this simple step. Okay, so right up here at the end of this, if we hit enter and enter, right, we have this extra line feed right here. That triggers Java to basically say, okay, this is the end of the manifest file. If for some reason you ended it right there, right, um, it'll go off on an error when you go to run the jar. Okay, so just good to know on that. So let's go ahead and come up here and save this. And these are just some, some tags here. Uh, midlet name, I called it the same name as the class. Midlet version 1.0, vendor, PyJava tutorials. You could put any of this stuff you want in here. Now, midlet-1, this is basically going to be, um, well, I'll go over that later when I talk more about midlets, but this is the name of the class specifically right here. And if it was part of a package, you could have like, you know, um, package name dot, you know, blah, 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 there. But uh, since we don't have a package name on our hello pi thing there, we're just gonna put in the name of the class. I'll go over these other two values later on too as well. So we're just going to come up here and save this, close out of that, okay? So now we are ready to create our hello pi jar file. So we're gonna type the following into the terminal, okay? Um, scoot it down just a hair there. All right, um, jar CVFM, and I'll talk in future tutorials about this. I'm already getting a little long-winded on some of this stuff here, but this is gonna be the name of the uh, the Java archive that we're creating, hellopy.jar, and then jar, and then uh, we're gonna put in the manifest.mf, the name of the manifest file, right? And then, of course, the bytecode that we need to compile into this Java archive. And we'll hit enter. And manifest, blah, 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 so on and so forth there, right? Now, if we do a directory here, now we've got our compiled Hello Pi, we've got our Hello Pi Java archive, we've got our Hello Pi source code file, and our manifest. All right, so we are getting closer. Um, one other thing we want to do here, real quick, is do an ls and then a minus l, and that will give us some details on this thing here. And the hello pi.jar, the Java archive, we're gonna want to make sure that we're paying special attention to this, the file size of it. It's 896 bytes, and that might be different than yours if you typed it out or have extra characters or something like that, or who knows what, right? Uh, maybe you named your manifest some different values or something there. So, but you're just gonna want to do this ls minus l to get the byte size. Now we need one last file, and that is a JAD file, which is a Java application descriptor to describe the Imlet suite. The JAD file is similar to the manifest MF file, only we need to record the size of the hello pi jar file into one of the lines. So we're gonna type the following into terminal, okay? Uh, leaf pad again, and we're gonna do hello pi.jad. All right, now that we're over here, we're gonna just drag this over here. And we're gonna cut and paste um, this right in here, okay? Now, here's the file size, and I already knew it was gonna come out to 896 bytes, but this is where you'd wanna change it if it was something different, you know? Um, so, but you wanna change this 896. And if you ever make a change to your file, right? Your original Java source code file and add more lines or something like that, and chances are when you recompile it into the Java archive, it's going to be a different file size and you will need to adjust the uh, Java application descriptor file accordingly each time you do so, okay? So we're just gonna come up here and save this. 
All right, now we've got everything we need to go ahead and uh, run this. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. And um, what we're going to do is do a cd dot dot. Just follow along with my, my stuff here, right? Change directories down to the Java folder, change it to the Pi, right? We're going to cd to the Java ME, the source code, or the Java micro edition installation folder there. And we're going to change directories to the bin. Now inside of this bin folder, um, there are a bunch of these .sh script files there. And um, the first one that, and I'll go over this in a future tutorial, what each one of these things do there. Uh, but uh, all we're going to do here for the moment here is we're going to um, we're going to do what, what's called install our midlet that we just created. So we're going to use the install midlet script there, and we're going to point it the the parameter. The only parameter we need to do is to pass the location of our um, Java archive file there, which is on home pi Java hello pi hello pi dot jar. Okay, and we'll hit enter. Now what we're going to see is we're going to see some errors here, and this is actually perfectly normal because, um, well, originally when you think of an Internet of Things device, it doesn't have a screen or anything like that, so we're actually running it on the same device that we're, um, that we're emulating from and, and controlling there. Normally you would, uh, you would emulate down into a device and execute the code on a, on a computer while being connected to it, and I'll show you how to do that in a future tutorial as well. But the line that we're looking for right here is the suite was successfully installed. And then we're going to get this ID 2 here, right? And that ID number may change there. Don't worry about this other notifications. That's, that's trying to send a notification to something connected to a proxy server to this machine, which obviously we don't have. So that probably makes no sense, but don't worry about it. It will make perfect sense later on. So we're concerned with the suite was successfully installed, ID number 2. Okay, so the, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to run the suite, okay? So we're going to just do dots. So if we do an ls again there, you see here's the run suite script there. Uh, run suite. And we're going to um, pass it the number, this number, this id number 2 here, okay? So 2, okay? So what's going to happen there is it's going to, it's going to run our program and you can see hello pi has come up here ignore this error ignore this error here too as well right um, and you'll notice that the program is blocking it's sitting there waiting and that's because an internet of things device like a um, you know a, a camera IP camera whatever or a garage door opener they're just sitting there and they're constantly doing whatever we've told them to do over and over and over again in this particular case We've told the Raspberry Pi to display Hello Pi, and that was pretty much it. We don't have any sort of looping routine, but it is sitting there blocking, and it's waiting um, until it's waiting for exit, where we where it will then go in and run, execute the destroy app method there. Okay, so you'll notice up here, press Control C to exit. So if we if we exit the program here, which is Control C, right, you will see that. Um, Control C gets printed here, and then it goes ahead and executes our destroy app, which prints to the console goodbye Pi. It's exactly what we get. We're now back down to our um, our prompt here, so now the program is completely over. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just close out of that. Uh, close out of this. Close out of that. I'm going to close that window, kind of clean all this stuff up, and I'm going to leave you guys with some final thoughts there. So, um, I crammed a lot into this tutorial, so don't be concerned if you're, you know, a little confused on some of the things that I did. Uh, but anyway, stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will write a program to blink an LED from one of the GPIO ports on the Raspberry Pi. As you go through these tutorials, a lot of this stuff I'll go over in a little bit more detail, and, you know, you'll, you'll get it. Just give it a little bit of time. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.